Okay, my friends, another shocker du jour. This is a meteorite that they found coming through space, and they have determined that these little flakes here are new minerals they've never seen before. Now, I'm going to tell you exactly what this is, because I understand exactly what it is from my mud fossil research. This is two minerals never seen before in nature discovered in an asteroid fell to Earth. I have an asteroid here, and I'll show you the same things. Now, you see that red spot right there? Uh, you see all these metals? I think I know exactly what this is. And it is biology. And this right here, I will show you the same, same flakes, the same black, and then the same, all these little balls. And this is layers that have burnt off. This is the cheap layers, these little flakes. This is the cheapest. This is the next cheapest. Then it goes down from there into these, which is called the interstitium. These are just layers of, of tissue. And I have them here in my microscope here. Right, what you're looking at right there is a meteorite. You see it, the little magnetic meteorite there? And um, that has the same stuff as what we're looking at here. And I also have fingertips here that have the same stuff because that is grip skin. And what we're looking at is a fingertip. And blood is what turns into iron and, and metals. You see the one they're talking about came through space? This one also is a fingertip came through space. And here is where the red blood was. It exploded out because it was wet coming through space. This one came in differently than the other one. The other one, I believe, came in against the atmosphere, cooked up and smelted off until there was nothing but metal left. This came in with the atmosphere. I'll show you what I mean. But I think I either showed you or will show you. This is exactly the same thing, only this never came through space. But there's where your red blood is, right here. Same thing as the red blood right there. And the same thing is here. One side is artery, one side is vein. The veins clamp off. They can't go back. That's why you see this is pinched off. See that little hole right there? Same thing here. Can't blow out. Here they blow out. Same thing on this one. This is the red blood side. They blow right out. You see all these three three places. Boom, boom, boom. All blown out. This side clamped off, clamped off, clamped off. But they're both fingertips coming out of space on Earth. I'll show you all these little fibers that they're seeing in their fingertip that came out of space that turned into metal. And I will try to explain to you why this one didn't turn into metal and that one did. But this is, they, they can become absolutely 100% saturated with blood. Okay, so let's get back to a little bit of um, bench work. Now, again, meteorite. I'm going to show you why it's not turned into iron. But let, uh, um, blood turns into metals. That's why lungs, hearts, and livers are just absolutely, those are the ones that are really the metal asteroids. It's rare that a fingertip would have that much blood in it. But it must have, however it died, it was saturated with blood. And everything else cooked off. It must have come in really, really hot and burnt everything all off except the blood. But I can still see all of the blood vessels and so forth at the bottom. You'll see all of that little gnarly stuff is in that fingertip that came through space and turned into metal. Now, here's why one turns into metal, one doesn't. Okay, here's the story with meteorites. They can come in from any angle. They can come in from here, they can come in this way, they can come in this way, they can come down this way, over here, or whichever way. Now, there's going to be certain directions they can come in where they're going to impact like hell and burn up, just cook and explode. And then there's other ones where they're just going to sort of float with the Earth. Now, this one here, the Earth turns in this direction. Now, it's going a thousand miles an hour. It's 25,000 miles in circumference and then you have the atmosphere which is way out here so this is even going faster so let's say it's going let's go a thousand miles an hour if it's going in this direction 
So this comes in, it's already at a thousand miles an hour, so it's just sort of floating with, with the atmosphere and it floats down to earth. It cooks up a little bit and it blows out its red, wet blood because it's hot enough to do that and scar it up a little bit, but not like it would be if it came in in this direction because it's already going a thousand miles an hour. So we're impacting with with the atmosphere that's coming at us at a thousand miles an hour and we're coming in at a thousand now we got two thousand and it cooks up burns up and explodes and turns into metal if it's fortunate enough to stay together it will become totally metal all of the cheap stuff will go that's the key with the metal asteroids uh, metal um, meteorites and if it came exactly in on the the um, equator against the rotation of the earth and it was really moving fast to begin with and it hit that it's all over usually they explode because they're just so hot they can't stay together but if it stays together it becomes solid iron however you still find the blood in there when i say iron no that's not true it's solid metals with the blood still in there as well hematite and magnetite Okay, as I showed you in my meteorite DNA, uh, meteorite lung, we had some of these left over and some black spots, but most of the real cheap stuff, the red burns off quickly and a, a lot of it. But mine didn't turn into a heavy metal one like, like the most of the iron ones. Now, we do see these fibers. Now, these fibers are in this lung, this right here right there. That lung is DNA tested and certified human. And that is the fibers that coat that lung. It's called pleur. It's the same as grip skin. It's a very tough, rubbery, flexible fabric. Now, what else? I'm going to show you some from a fingertip, which is right here. You see that? That's the same stuff. Only this is a fingertip from a terrestrial finger. All right, this is some more. These are all different types of mud fossil tissues. Here's one. Which is, that's something f fungus growing down inside of a lung. You see, the, and the black is usually artery, I mean a vein, and the red is artery. What do we got here? This is just blood vessels. These are little blood vessels in a lung, alveoli probably. I, I had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. This is, that's just a little blood vessel, I believe, in a lung. blood spot <laughs> you see these these are anything can turn into anything depends on the conditions that it finds itself in when it's dying and interred that's those little flakes I'm telling you there's nothing that is like what you thought this is from a, a lung I think that might be from the one that I'm showing you from space I'm pretty sure that is, because it's all cooked off here. There's some of the white fiber still left. But it's like normally a lung would look like that. Here's one that where the blood vessels, where the, the lung, they call these vugs. These are the holes that are in the lungs. They start to fill in with crystals. Sometimes they're colored, sometimes they're, they're just clear crystals, sometimes they're like 50-50. All kinds of things happen to them. They call them inclusions. They're things that... Now, now this here is the fascia part. That's the very edge of your skin. And this is really tough, tough stuff. And then you get into the fleshy stuff down below. That's, that's actually a fingertip. And that's the fingerprints. 
And that's the thickness of the skin that's on her fingerprints. I'm not kidding. You. This stuff is wild, man. I'm telling you, it's crazy. There it is again. So you have your skin with your fingerprints on it. Then you have your basement layer underneath. This, I don't know, I think there's some gold in there or whatever. A lot of this I was just scoping around for stuff that was obviously some form of biology. That's a blood vessel, and that's actually a valve that's in the middle of the blood vessel. This is what's right underneath the skin. It's tough, tough stuff. That's, I'm sure that's for, out of a, a fingertip. That's the toughest stuff. This, I don't know what the hell that is. It was growing out of one of these blood vessels. This is what it is. These, these are our little blood vessels. This one here had this thing growing out of it. What it is, je ne sais pas. But it kind of scared me. I had one the other day, a little snake looking thing came out of one when I put catalase into it. And that was that was from, well I think that was from this uh, little meteorite. As a matter of fact, it, it was from the meteorite, now that I remember it was. Look at all this stuff, this is just crazy stuff, man. This is all, this is like leather. But it's not leather, it's from, you know, it's from a rock, but it is, it, at one time it was leather. This, I don't know what the hell that was. And this amazing stuff. Well, I don't know what's going on here. Look at that, that's like raw meat. I think that's metals and gold and stuff. This, this was from a test I did with bone and and some different chemistry and some different, you know, you know that type of thing. And this is the same thing where the blood was working its way into the bone and so forth with different chemicals. This is the grip skin. Now this is in a fingertip. It's a very small fingertip, but this is the same grip skin. That's the stuff they're finding. That's it right there. Boy, they got a lot of pictures, huh? It's all biology. It's all biology. Look at that. That's that's inside of a lung. That's they they and this is the blood that ran around the alveoli. These are the big holes inside of a lung. And they take on all different colors depending upon. And that's see that's where the blood ran through there, picking up all these different products in the lung. You see it? That's a whoops. That's a lung right there. Whoops. That's a lung right there. These are all the different colors of different transition metals that are in the blood that are in the lung. You see it? Now here's a good shot. You see all these dull looking colors? That's where the blood is running through there, that mixes in through the, all these alveoli. These were filled normally with air, so they ended up being holes. So what happened? They got filled with silicates. Well, what happens with silicates? Silicates have the affinity to attach to different other transition metals. And then the transition metals bring in the colors. And then they try to find their own buddies. And it's continuously in this aqueous solution. And this is called nucleophilic substitution. You have invaders and you have leavers. The leaving groups leave. The invading groups substitute. It's called nucleophilic substitution. Look it up. Very simple. And it's always in very long duration aqueous solutions. And that's what happened here. They just took over these new... They took over inside these lung cavities. You see it? And all this is the blood.
there it is just in a different light there's that vein again I think that might be the meteorite these are the holes going down in I think this is another metal meteorite I had here I get so much stuff, I just lose track of it. I gotta be honest with you, I got stuff coming out of my ears. I don't know what that is. <laughs> if you look at close at things, you, you're gonna have a hard time. Now that's my skin or something. See the blocks in the little, well, you see that in, in rocks all the time. There's some right here. Look at that. Holy smokes, I don't ever remember seeing that before. Wow. <laughs> That's selenite. I don't ever remember seeing that pattern before, but that's pretty damn interesting. Look at that. That's that's the, a belt. That's my belt, I think. But that's exactly what you find in um, in interstitium. That's interstitium. You see, and this is my belt again. This is the other side of my belt. This is the top with all the little balls flattened out. And the other side here is underneath where you have all the straps and the, it's been tanned. And here's another shot at the tan side. And this is the top of the belt here. And I have a leather jacket I was looking at too, it was really interesting. It had the same patterns as a lot of things I've seen on the earth. I don't, I don't know what I'm doing here. Alright, anyway, that's, that's some serious amount of stuff. <laughs> okay, this is the long this big long right here that I had DNA tested and CAT scan and it is human and what we're looking at is that little spot right there now I am going to drill into that with my drill you see my little drill here let me see if I can drill into that and get down to some nice fresh blood which I already did You see what's coming out of here? Hold on. I'm just going to drill down a little more and I'll bring it back into the scope in a second. Alright, here. Where did you go, my little hole? There it is right there. Now, you see all this stuff? Let me get closer so you can see all the debris around that hole. see that? Now if I put water on there, it would turn red. Now, let me change the light. I might even be able to see, have it turn red just by showing it with the light down. You see the colors? Now, I, I, I'm going to put some all this is just dust. You can take this now and send it off and get that DNA tested. Now, I would dust all that off first. Let me do that. I'm just going to take my little brush here and dust it right off. Well, it's not coming out of there good. All right, there it is. See, I'm drilled all the way down into there. That's the blood vessel. You can see it right at the very bottom. Now, let's see it right down the very bottom. Now, I'm going to put some hydrogen peroxide in there. Let's see if it bubbles. All 
right, get ready, my friend. Get ready, my friend. Hold on, take it easy. Slow down. You move too fast. We gotta make this moment last. You ready? Here we go. Look at him bubble it up. Look at him bubble. <laughs> Yee haw, baby. Look at that sucker go. Look at that thing go. My goodness. My goodness. Now watch. That's all bubbling up out of there because of catalase. Now look at the look at the thing shooting out of there. I wonder if there's any look at those things. All of a sudden you see poof. Hold on a second. Okay, we're gonna just see if we can get a catalase reaction out of this hole here. I'm gonna drill a little deeper into there, and then we're gonna put a little catalase in there, and then we'll see what we got. Okay, keep your eye up in here. This is where I just put some more hydrogen peroxide on. What's going to happen is everywhere that there is, is um, catalase, it's going to attack that hydrogen peroxide and turn it into bubbles. You see them? You see bubbles coming up over here, bubbles coming up over here, bubbles coming up over here some coming over here, some coming over here, anywhere where there's blood. Now this is a lung, so there's blood pretty much everywhere. You see the bubbles coming up? Every one of those bubbles is, is released when the chemistry of your body attacks something that has extra oxygen. They call them reactive oxygen species. And catalase is the agent that removes them. You can't have those things floating around your body. They attack things. That's why they're being removed here. I tell you, there's a lot of activity there. It takes a while for this to really set up reaction. And it's it's getting pretty reactive right now but this is where I drilled right in here and like I showed you this is the kind of little pin drill I use zip 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 and then it gets down past any surface layers contaminated layers whatever of course you clean it off and you do you know you just use common sense to extract this stuff but when you extract it it comes out literally like raw blood some of it comes out actually raw blood and I'm not kidding you raw blood just like you went to a blood bank and said give me a little bag of blood it comes out just like that okay so you have seen all on my little uh, bubbles from the catalase reaction now that is coming right off of that right there all right, this is a lung. This was a lung from space. Remember, it cooked up. It still has some of these little flakes. This is completely saturated with them because it didn't cook off. The cheap stuff cooks off. Well, this a lot of the cheap stuff was gone, and now it's 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 got a lot of metals, but not not so cooked off that there's nothing left. Because I'm going to be able to show you right now. The same reaction we saw with this lung, which is DNA certified, CAT scanned, tested in every way possible. And it is a human lung, anatomically, precisely exact, with the pleura and everything. And I have other ones that have actual blood coming out of them. So it's not something I don't understand. Now, if I can get this to give a good catalase reaction like this did, what would that tell you about this alleged asteroid or meteorite lung. It would tell me that it was it was alive at one time and it came through space 
and cooked off enough that it turned into magnetic and it it cooked off most of the cheap stuff and it is exactly like the meteorite they just showed coming out of space that's so special this one right here these are the flakes that I've been showing right along and this is the black part these are the interstitium balls let me show you that right now so we have layers that have cooked these la these parts here are normally cheap enough to go away in an iron meteorite these stayed so that's what they found is these but these are the same thing I'm just showing you right along they're the same ones that are in this the same ones that are in this the same ones that are in all my stuff and the same ones that are in the iron meteorite here this is identical to that meteorite right there identical no difference whatsoever and I could well I will show you everything but see these balls those are the interstitium balls that keeps your skin coming back where it's supposed to be let me show you that but these are layers all right, I don't think I had the camera focused in the right place. These are these little strappy pieces that I showed you on all of my stuff. They all have it. Even the one comes from, I have, this is identical to that meteorite. Identical. It's not cooked quite as much. This one, they're showing little spots that are cooked deeper and deeper. This is the interstitium balls. You see, they're, they're, they will be everywhere on here at a certain level. But th this is cooked, some, some of this is like straight iron, some of this is still whatever they call it, graftonite and so forth. And these are the new little pieces that they think are new minerals never seen before. Well, I got them right here. They're everywhere. It's not anything special. Alright, these are literally the interstitium balls. Again, it's been burnt off in layers down to this layer right here. Now, can I show you these layers? Yes, I can. I've shown you the layers in mine. Now, let's look at this. This is what the interstitium is. These are, these are all these little balls. It's all this stuff. And the cheap stuff cooks off. And the balls are not cheap. They're tough. And some of these fibers will still remain, but very few. The balls remain pretty good. Now I find mine in these outer edges too. These same little straps and the same little black stuff and the same little balls. Everything's here exa exactly the same and it's magnetic. It came through space. This is a heavy little bugger. Now I am going to drill right into one of these alveoli. These are just nothing more than sacks of blood. I'm going to drill down in to try to get past anything that might have got burnt off because any temperature, excess of a certain temperature, will kill all the chemistry. It'll denature it. So it, the enzymes won't work anymore. So I have to get past that layer of temperature. And I don't know if I can or not, but we're going to find out in a minute. So I'm going to get the drill out, and we're going to get right down in there. We're going to put a little catalase on there, see if we get a reaction. If we do, it means this thing here coming through space is still biologically viable. That's how I would take it. All right, there's the meteorite right there. And these are those little flakes. And most of the stuff is burnt off down to where you have the black cook stuff. But you still have all of these alveoli and I just put a little blood a little water in here and you can see there's literally blood in there and you see those these you see those holes right there hold on you see that I'm going to probably drill down somewhere I'm going to find a good hole to drill into and once we get past the stuff that would have been fried coming through the the atmosphere we'll have some good catalase coming out but this is exactly the fibers they're talking about. And this is a meteorite, so I bet these are the same minerals they're talking about. Although, everything changes a little bit differently depending on the temperature it's cooked to. That's what everything is about heat, pressure, and temperature. That's what creates different molecular chemistry. It's heat, pressure, temperature. You know, before when I said heat, pressure, and temperature, well, temperature and heat are not always the same thing. The heat is how long it takes to dissipate, basically. 
temperature is how how high the temperature got to be. If the temperature is way high, you're going to end up with just nothing but heavy metals. If the temperature is low, you're going to burn off the cheap stuff, but you're going to still have some cheap stuff. And that's what we have here. This was not enough of a temperature to make it into complete metal. Well, to make it into more metal like this. This still has some cheap stuff on there. Exactly like mine. Now, I'm going to drill right into that hole, and then we're going to put some catalase on it. Okay, I'm going to drill right into this spot right here. You see it? There's my drill. This is kind of hard to drill through, but all you got to do really is scrape the top off. For what the, what I'm doing here. No, I just blew it out of there. Where was it? Right there. All right, now we're gonna put a little catalase in there and see what happens. All right, here we go. Now, if we see a lot of foaming, we'll know that there's there's a pretty good amount of enzymes left in here. Now this is where we should see the foaming. Now I'm not seeing anything at the moment, but it does take a couple of minutes and because this came through space it may not do anything at all. I, I don't know. But it might after a couple of minutes we should get some foaming if there's anything in there. Again, I don't know if there is or not. I mean, it came through space, and the, the whole key with what's called denaturing it means to heat something up to a point where the molecular bonds break that are the normal structure of the molecule, and then it never, it, it just won't do what it's supposed to, it's, it, its nature is gone, it's denatured. Now, let's just keep playing around here and see if we can get something to go. This is the area we're going to be looking at. Sometimes this takes a while. You know what? I'm gonna just so you don't have to just watch a dead screen because it may never it may never give off anything. Oh wait a minute! Uh, I think I might be seeing something. Let's let's sit here for oh four or five minutes and then I'll come back and turn it back on. Okay, watch right here. Watch right down. This is the membrane. Where the membranes are is where the catalase should be. And the catalase is in that, that layer of membrane that separates you from the rest of the world. So that if something tries to get through there, this, this attacks it. And I can see catalase reacting right there. Those are the little oxygen bubbles. I'm going to let it sit here for a couple of minutes, and you'll see there should be a pretty good, good amount of them after a while. Because this, this is, uh, it came through space. I mean, if the catalase held up through space, I don't see any reason that the biology shouldn't hold up. Because catalase is nothing more than biology, too. All right, I just scrubbed it down one last time. Let's let it just go there. I'm not going to say a word. I'm just going to let it sit here. And if you want to jump over this, you can. But if you want to watch to see how this manifests itself, you can do that as well. Everywhere... Ooh, look at that. What the hell is that? It may be dislodging things deep inside from the the passageways where all the blood would be. Look, look, look at that red blood coming out of there. Things change when you put, when you work with the chemistry here. You see it starting to bubble up over here, bubbling up over here, starting to get pretty fuzzy. You 
bubbles are starting to come up from down deep inside. That is some strange stuff. Let's see if I can find my little cove here. What is that? You see, I just knocked that piece of red off of there. Boom, here comes the bubble. See, that, that red blood, look, 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 look at this. Look at that red blood coming out of there. Isn't that something? This is just incredible. Look, it's starting to migrate the red blood right out of there. There, there it goes. There's plenty more where that came from. That's just a bubbling mess in there. Now, this, again, is a meteorite came from space. Now, I have another one here, the big one, the big fingertip. And that one, I'm, I'm positive I'm going to get some catalase reaction out of that one. And this is not bad. That's pretty damn good. We know that there's, look, look there's, see the bubbles coming out of here? Anyway, you could you got to dig into them. You can't take it off the surface. Everybody thought, oh, you just swabbed it off the surface and had DNA tests done. Absolutely not. You have to go down directly through an artery. Get in an artery because that's the cheap stuff. Well, it's the easy stuff to get out. Let me see it come right out of there. That's literally a scab that was down in there. Okay, I fear this has gone extremely long. So, this was that iron meteorite, which is this little iron meteorite right here. And, um, you could see there was catalase coming out of there, so as far as I'm concerned, there's still viable chemistry in there of life. Now, this is the one that came through space, the big one, and it blew out the blood on the side. I'm sure we're going to see catalase reaction in here as well. And what you're looking at right now, remember how they showed those fabrics? Well, here it is up here in the microscope. What we're looking at right here is this fingertip, which is exactly the same as that, only it's terrestrial. And it's, it has the same fabrics in it as the other one, too. Now, here, let me turn off the light so you can see it. All right, here, I'm going to focus up. Remember, that's what we're looking at in the microscope. Here it is right up here. There's all that fabric stuff, see? Hold on, let me focus it in a little bit. You see it? That's, that's what the fabric of skin is. Skin, membranes, pleura, all your epidermis. What this is now, they would say that's feldspar. Feldspar is collagen. That's all it is. It's collagen. Every cell, every feldspar, 100% of the feldspars are attached to aluminum silicates. That's because that's collagen attaches to aluminum silicates. And they claim all of this stuff is feldspar. It's not feldspar, it's skin. And it's tissue, like the, the, the lung I showed you. There was DNA tested in CAT scan and everything else. Same thing with the fingertips. They're all the same. They all have the same fabric. And they're all, now there's no question what they are. They are biology. So that thing that came through space with its newest molecules attached is biology. And I say it came through space hitting head on into space and cooked off all the cheap stuff except every now and then there was a couple little flakes and that's what they found and they said "Ooh, look at that and it's probably cooked to a certain temperature that's very very unusual because virtually everything was gone almost everything was turned to metal so 
I would have expected that stuff to go too, but that's why it's special, I guess. Okay, I, I'm just going to finish it up by just wrapping everything in one big bundle. Michelle Starr, I'd love to speak with her about the things she keeps reporting on, and I'm trying to get it through to her, and I'd love to do it. This is the 1st of December, and this is, again, this iron meteorite, this metal meteorite. And you see the, the little red bloody spots in here? This is, this is biology. I'm telling you, it's biology. Now, it reveals materials never seen before in nature. Two minerals have been analyzed. Now, these are the materials. And I showed this, these are the interstitial balls. These little balls are the things that hold your flesh in position. This has been eroded down. This is at the top of the grip skin. And it coats the skin and holds it so that it can stretch and bring and do and all this stuff. This is the tough, well, it's, it's, it's tough in a rubbery way. Below that, these balls are tough as hell. They're hard and they're all over the earth, so it's nothing special. Now... These are just more and more layers, and fingertips are just saturated with blood. So it was heavy enough, probably coming into the atmosphere, and it just cooked everything off except primarily the metals. They did find this in the outer edges, the little edges you see here and there. All right, so bottom line is that is that fingertip right there, right next to the one that came through space. Now, it's like I said, this is going way too long today, so I'm going to cut it off right now. And the next one will be uh, this one, uh, and this one, we'll look at both of them, put some catalase, we'll do all kinds of stuff, we'll drill into them, blah, 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 a lot of microscope work, and um, try to understand what we're looking at. All right, I love you all.